but it's really uh, been popular. Um, we sell a lot of these actually quite quickly. Um, and uh, again, the, it's a DSLR imaging crowd that really likes this, this uh, uh, dew heater. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are uh, in development with a uh, dew heater controller that we're hoping to launch in the summer. We also got dew shields. Okay. There seems to be a shortage of dew shields in the world, again, for some reason. The, uh, you know, we get into some really cool things again around astrophotography and as of today, we were able to um, uh, launch this new product. This is a product, uh, it's been around for a little while, but now we've become the distributor for North America uh, for the nano tracker. This is from a company called Cytron in Japan. Um, it is made in Japan. It is a small little uh, camera tracker that will literally fit I don't have a picture over here, but literally fit in the palm of your hand. Um, it'll support up to two kilograms. It runs off three AA batteries or again off of a uh, power tank um, and uh, lasts the night. I took one of these out in my backyard um, and uh, aligned it very easily with the, uh, the sight hole that, that, that's shown here. And uh, I did some astrophotography of the Orion Nebula. Um, or uh, my backyard, I was doing two minute exposures and uh, it was working just as I was hoping and expecting to work. So this is something that's really cool. Low cost, 385, and uh, you get into astrophotography real easily. Just pop it onto a tripod and uh, attach your camera and, and tell it to go. So Starfield's main reason is to provide astrophotography products for the Canadian market or anywhere really. Um, and to try to help make astrophotography um, more enjoyable and easier uh, to, um, to, to the individual user. What I really like though, is that now, you know, I, Starfield is joining the ranks of some, some uh, excellent Canadian manufacturers out there, um, such as uh, um, Mallencam, uh, Kendrick Astro Instruments, Skyshed, um, the uh, Hercules telescopes, which is, makes observatory class telescopes. There, there are some really, really good uh, Canadian uh, manufacturers out there. And um, to be able to be part of uh, those ranks to me is very important and, and honoring. Um, so that, that's, us, that, that's Starfield in, in a nutshell. And, and I thank you for your time for listening. If there's any questions, I'd like to uh, answer them. Hey, Steve, hey, thanks. Steve? Yes. Yeah, I, I use a lot of your products, and I can't tell you how happy I am with them. They're, they're solidly made, and uh, I'm not trying to make a plug here for you or anything like that. It's just the user. They're easy to use. They're decent quality and a good price. So it's very five stars and thank you, in my opinion. So, thank, you, thank you, Dennis. I really appreciate that. Hey, any other questions or comments for Steve? Well, I have a question. Yeah, Francine. Hi, that was great, Steve. Um, I just wondered, is your store just online or is it like an open store that we can actually go in and browse and look at the products? Uh, thanks for your question. So uh, Starfield is, uh, um, doesn't have a storefront per se. Um, uh, Ontario Telescope does have a, uh, a, a small showroom, but because of the pandemic, I've actually decided to shut it down um, since March of last year. Uh, so I don't even, I don't really have anything set up. Um, and because of the uh, lockdown, not lockdown, we're on lockdown, not lockdown. Um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's been difficult to decide what, what to do with, um, with the store. Uh, but we are doing pickups, you know, if you wanted to pick something up pay for it in person. We can do that as well. Okay. If you're in, if um, like you're interested in a telescope, but you want to look at it and see, like, could you make an appointment with you? Is that how? Yeah. Like, I know um, now after the pandemic, like I, I mean, now with the pandemic, everything's dif difficult, but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if there's something particular you want to see, by all means, just give me a call. Um, our number is on the website and, and uh, or drop me an email and we'll, we'll figure something out. That, that's not a problem. But like I say, right now it's just so everything's so fluid. It's, it's difficult to say yeah. what what's going to happen. 
Okay, thanks. But there's good products because you can't have that Dobsonian that you were talking about like for beginners. So yeah, you know, we're we're quite excited about that. Um, the uh, uh, it, it it is it, Dobsonians are are very very popular. Um, uh, I, I, I'm actually quite excited about this. I have found in the past eight months, and this is probably pandemic driven, there is, there is a um, huge push for people to get into astronomy, which is really exciting the, the, um, because it means you know, more people in this great hobby. Um, but there's, a, there, there's also a growing desire to have good equipment. Um, uh, and I think a Dobsonian is an excellent place uh, to start for anyone. Because you get uh, some of the typically used, you can get a good view out of it. And uh, like one of my favorite books for, for astronomy has been Turn Left on Orion. We started selling them. Um, and, and you put that those two items together and, and learn the night sky, right? Um, and then transfer that knowledge to like an Explore the Universe certificate. Um, and it just makes it easier, especially with a dog. It, it, it's... Uh, uh, it's quite easier, uh, in my opinion, uh, from my experience anyways. Um, not that I've gotten my certificate yet, but I have to, I'll find time to finish that off. Um, uh, and, and for for the value, right? Uh, for, you know, you're spending less than $1,000 all in, right? You get you get a high quality. What's, what's unique, we spent a lot of time on that, on that Dobsonian. Um, the, it's a very, very high quality mirror. It, for, it, it's more expensive than, than other Dobsonians on the market, but it offers a lot more features, right? The, the fan on the back, a much more sturdier base, a higher quality mirror, a better clutch system. Um, so it, 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 it's not a more expensive item just for the sake of it being more expensive. It's a higher quality, um, high quality instrument. And, and I, I don't think of it as just a telescope. I think of it as an, as an instrument for, um, for, for using to, to enjoy astronomy. Thanks. You're okay, thanks, Steve. Thank yeah, we're we'll looking forward to getting back to UTM so that we can have two or three of those 10 inch uh, daubs as raffle prizes every, uh, every meeting. That'll be great. Yeah, we can work something out. No problem. Okay, thanks again. Very, Write that uh, down. Very Thank you. We all look forward to getting out, uh, observing together, and uh, checking out the checking out those dogs. Okay, I'd like to uh, move to the uh, to our meeting tonight, our AGM. And uh, just a bit of background in case this is your uh, your first AGM. It's, uh, it's essentially an annual business meeting for the center. Uh, we hold it mainly so that we can just spend some time uh together talking about the previous year um i guess uh you know we aren't a uh, an incorporation so that we don't have to have uh these meetings but we do as a uh, more or less because our bylaws state that the, that we have to have them and uh and that it's a mechanism to uh not only report to our members but to report to uh to the national society on our activities as I mentioned, this is our uh, first ever uh, AGM. Uh, we've been doing this uh, for 15 years now, uh, when we became a center back in 2006. And uh, it's kind of a unique uh, operation and a little bit of a challenge on a Zoom meeting, but I uh, hopefully uh, it will go well. Uh, first thing I want to do is, is, uh, is make sure that we thank uh, uh, UTM for their support over the years. We've uh, been holding meetings at UTM since 2003 and uh, they have been a staunch supporter of the organization uh, and that includes uh, people like uh, John Persing and John Lester and, uh, and Uli Krull who uh, sponsored us from the beginning and uh, I, we all uh, appreciate that very much and look forward to going back to, uh, to UTM as soon as we can. The uh, format of the meeting is, uh, was published in the uh, agenda uh, in, uh, in Messenger. And uh, if you've got a copy of that, I'd 
suggest you re refer to it. Um, the first item is just a, a welcome re review of the agenda. Uh, what we will do is we'll look at last year's minutes and then go through some executive reports from the president, secretary, and treasurer, uh, and then uh, a nomination committee report and presentation of the uh, 2021 council. And then we'll have some time for some com committee reports and, uh, and then any new business uh, that anyone wants to bring up. Uh, and that's generally been the, the format of, uh, of the AGM. Uh, so with that, I will move to uh, item number two, which is the adoption of the minutes from the 2019 annual general meeting. So we're all members in good standing here, primarily because, uh, well, I hope we are, uh, but also we just advertised uh, the meeting to our members. Um, as a member, you have the uh, right to uh, make motions, second motions, and and vote on motions, and certainly comment on motions. Uh, so the uh, 2019 Annual General Meeting minutes were published in Messenger, and so I will uh, ask for a motion to approve those minutes. Motion to approve the second? minutes. Who was that? Do you need a first and second uh, um, to uh, get the motion on underway. Yeah, Steve. I uh, Steve Malia is moving. Do I have a seconder? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll go for seconder, Andy. Andrew. Okay, Andrew Modolinski is seconding. Uh, any comments on uh, on the minutes? Okay, then I will just call the question. And probably the best way to do this with forty-two people is I will ask if there are any, is there anyone who uh, is uh, not approving but disapproving or voting against the motion? Okay, not hearing any, is there anyone who is abstaining? Okay, then the motion to approve the 2019 annual general meeting minutes is passed. All right, the next item is the president's report. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to uh, recognize some people and uh, sort of talking generally about the, about the past year. Um, it's uh, an honor again for me to be president of the, of the center after uh, being uh, uh, away for several years. Uh, uh, the, uh, as, you, as many of you know, uh, we started the organization back in 2003 as the Mississauga Astronomical Society. Uh, certainly 2020 will be a year that everyone remembers for the rest of our lives. Uh, there was really no manual to open up to figure out how to, uh, to run the center, let alone how to run our day-to-day -day, uh, lives. But... Uh, I'm actually looking back on the on the year. I'm I'm quite uh, impressed, quite happy with the way things went. Uh, we stepped up and uh, did what we could to continue making the Mississauga Center uh, uh, an organization that was uh, as inclusive as we could to be to uh, to members and to share uh, various activities, if not in person, then uh, then uh, virtually. Uh, we, uh, we had a, a rather bright comet in the summer and then a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in December uh, to share. And uh, many members stepped up and uh, uh, shared their uh, observations with everyone, which uh, was a great way to, uh, uh, to include everybody in, in some astronomy. Uh, I do want to uh, recognize the National Society uh, for all of their programming. Uh, they uh, really worked hard. Uh, certainly people like Jenna Hines put together some excellent programming, not only to bring some uh, astronomy to everyone at home, but also to encourage people to uh, work on the, uh, 
Explore the Universe certificates and, and other programs. So uh, that was great. Also, the National Society uh, set up a program to uh, support members financially if they uh, had problems with uh, uh, seeing their way to, uh, to renew their memberships if they uh, wanted to, but just, uh, just had trouble doing so. Uh, the council is, uh, as you know, a, uh, a group of members who uh, volunteer their time to, uh, to help run the society. And uh, many of them have, uh, have been on council for, for a while. Um, I'd certainly like to thank one person, that is uh, Alan Connery, for, for his support during the year. Uh, he and I would spend some time uh, chatting about various things, and it's always nice to use Alan as a sounding board. And uh, I think uh, with all the things that Alan did with Telescope Loan and, and various other things supporting our new treasurer, uh, uh, he deserves uh, uh, recognition. Thank you, Randy. Um, the uh, rest of the executive, uh, Anil with his finances and Sheila with the uh, secretary have been all very supportive in, in uh, helping things out. And uh, also all of the counselors. Uh, we had several meetings during the year. Some of them uh, called more or less at the last minute just to uh, try to uh, handle the ongoing uh, COVID situation. Um, as for 2021, it'd be nice to be able to sit down and, and plan uh, what 2021 is going to be like. Uh, at this point in time, I think it's going to be pretty well same old, same old. Uh, I hope we can return to UTM in the fall uh, and return to a program at Riverwood. Uh, but as we've seen, it's... Uh, a little bit difficult to predict the future these days. So all we can do is uh, uh, work uh, on a week by week, month by month, by month uh, basis. Uh, there is a uh, rather significant sunrise eclipse on June 10th. And uh, many of us uh, uh, observed down by the lake uh, a sunrise partial eclipse many years ago. I don't remember what year it was, but it was in, in November. And uh, it seems to me that that's certainly something we can do uh, and still adhere to any social distancing and uh, other rules. Um, so I'm hoping that that's uh, something we can do. It is at five in the morning, so if you're not an early bird, it might be a little difficult. Uh, but that's going to be a significant, one of the, I guess, the main significant event for 2021. So that's my report. Um, I would like to move on to our secretary's report. Uh, Sheila's report appeared in the, uh, uh, in the newsletter, in, the, in Messenger. And uh, I'd like to thank Sheila for uh, producing such a thorough uh, summary of, uh, of the year. Um, this isn't something that we vote on or anything, but uh, I think it's important that all of the primary events of the year are, uh, are recognized. And as you can see in this list, uh, uh, not only our programming, but uh, any outreach events or whatever there, it's a, it's a well-written report. So I'd like to thank Sheila for doing that. And as this is her last one, I would like to recognize Sheila for her, uh, her work as, as, as uh, secretary. So uh, thank you very much, Sheila. Putting my little hands up, there we go. Yeah, it's being a secretary and recorder, that's a, a rather a thankless uh, job, but we, uh, we certainly appreciate it. And it's, it's always nice to have these reports to go back and look at over, over time. And since I'm uh, taking minutes right now, I'm, I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And one thing we're, uh, we've done is we've added a photograph to go into the uh, REC annual report of one of our Zoom meetings, because I thought that would be uh, appropriate. And since it was Robert Sawyer, we thought we'd show off a little bit that we had uh, 
Robert Sawyer as a, as a speaker. Uh, the next uh, step is our treasurer's report. And uh, our treasurer, Anil Mathur, is uh, going to give his first presentation as treasurer. And uh, these financial statements are uh, essentially a, a snapshot of uh, how we're doing financially. And Anil, I'm, uh, the floor is yours. If, do you have your uh, statements handy that you can share, or how do you want to do this? Yeah, I think, uh, well, thanks, Randy. Hi, everybody. So as Randy said, this is my first support, so go easy on me, all right? Uh, uh, so I'm going to share my screen. I think it'll just be easier uh, to do things that way. Uh, and so just give me a sec here. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So essentially, uh, I want to go through two documents with you. Uh, one being the uh, statement of operations or P&L, whatever you want to call it. So you should be able to see that on your screen right now. Uh, and as you can see, we have numbers for 2020. Uh, I also have shown 2019 comparisons, but uh, as we are all painfully aware, 2020 was a year like no other. Uh, and uh, that is also <laughs> reflected in the financials. Um, you, know, you may recall that we had normal in-person meetings till about, I think it was March, and then uh, virtually the rest of the year. And that shift to virtual has had a pretty material impact on some, but not all of our revenue and expense lines. Um, and so just to bring that into sharper focus, what I thought I'd do this year, and this is a bit unusual, but I've added a column here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, oops, uh, that talks about COVID impact and what really has been impacted uh, by the fact that uh, we were virtual this year. Uh, just at a high level, uh, our income was more negatively impacted than expenses. There were obviously lines in both, but uh, uh, income more so. And that is because uh, almost half of our income uh, is generated from things that are possible only in an in-person environment. For example, auction, raffle, uh, and revenues from any courses that we that we hold. So for example, in 2019, we had, uh, uh, I think, an event at Riverwood from which we made a thousand bucks, which I'm highlighting right here. So, um, so, you know, all in all, I would say, you know, half of our income lines were really impacted by uh, COVID. And you can see by looking at the Ys over here in these three lines, and if you add those up, uh, for 2019, if my math is right, that is almost $3,000 uh, versus only 480 um, in 2020. So difference of two and a half thousand dollars. So that was pretty significant. Uh, interestingly, or probably not surprisingly, other big ticket items like memberships, you know, fairly steady, uh, as well as uh, donations. Now, uh, on the expense side, we've also had some savings on in-person meeting costs, such as speaker expenses right here. We spent almost $600 in 2019, and that, that those are costs of bringing in people from out of town. Uh, and so obviously we didn't have that this year. We didn't have uh, member events that we would normally have uh, in the summer and fall. Um, uh, and, and things like that. So, uh, so we've had savings there, but you know, also offset by the cost of uh, Zoom, you know, for us to meet uh, virtually. So when you add all of that up, uh, we still managed to eke out our surplus of $2,000 uh, this year. And, you know, and not surprisingly, that was down from last year at 2700 so uh, you know lower by almost $700 for the year so that kind of sums up uh, you know what the year was like from a revenue and expense standpoint um, and and before I move on to the balance sheet maybe Randy I'll pause here and see if people have any comments or questions okay any questions for uh, the treasurer Okay, I think you're good to go there, Anil. 
Okay, so I'm gonna now share the balance sheet. Oops, that's not it. <clears throat> Sorry, bear with me a second. I should have been better organized. Here we go. All right, so um, so the balance sheet is quite straightforward, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, the only thing, um, uh, uh, you know, worth pointing out is that we do have some accounts payable, uh, and, and these were for expenses that we didn't quite uh, cut a check for in uh, um, at the end of the year. So relatively small number at $376. Uh, you can see it was 750 almost last year. So we did a lot of cleaning up. Uh, but, uh, but really then the only thing that's left is we've got a, a healthy financial position. We have a member's equity of almost $23,000. Uh, and um, that is reflected in cash at the bank. It's really as simple as that. So, so I think I think the membership can take comfort in the fact that uh, you know I think uh, we're financially strong, and uh, who knows what next year is going to be like. But you know, if there's some curveballs, I think we're in a good position to uh, to weather that. Um, so I I think that kind of uh, completes it for me, uh, Randy. And if uh, there are any questions on the balance sheet, I'll take them now. Otherwise. Um, you know, that would be my report. Okay, Anil, great, thank you. Any questions for Anil on any aspects of the finances? Uh, are we gonna do the budget or no? no we don't normally present the we budget. We don't okay. normally do, do the budget uh, for next year, no. I used to. Thanks, you made me do uh, that all those years? <laughs> <laughs> nice guys. <laughs> He's just a tough act to follow. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right, uh, we normally have a motion to accept the financial report, so I will uh, call on someone to make that motion. I so move. Wendy Belcher has moved. Alan accept. Connery seconds. Alan Connery seconds. Any further discussion on the 2020 financial report presented by our treasurer? I think congratulations that we're solvent. <laughs> okay. Just All right. Those membership uh, bills. I will call the question. Uh, again, anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Okay, we will uh, say that the motion, the acceptance of the financial committee report or the treasurer's report is uh, approved. Thank you very much, Anil. Excellent job. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Well noted. It's a uh, it's a big job having the doing the finances and uh, presenting them as well. All right, I will move on to the next item, our nomination committee report. Uh, I didn't see Joe here. Is Joe here tonight? I don't see him. So in his stead, I will uh, present the nomination re committee report, which is essentially that uh, every year the nomination committee is responsible in uh, recommending to the council uh, a slate of uh, executive and counselors for the upcoming year. And uh, we published uh, that slate in the, in the newsletter. And so I'm very pleased to present to the membership uh, the current slate and maybe if I can uh, find it here. Not as prepared as Anil, obviously. Turn on your video, Randy. Huh? Turn on your video. I'm the video guy. Uh, hopefully that's it. Tell me if you see it. Do we have the slate? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, maybe I can, uh... 
All right, so here is a, a presentation of the 2021 executive, uh, which is the following. Um, uh, I'm finishing up a second year of a two-year term as, in Al, as is Alan for president and vice president. Uh, our uh, se secretary stepped down, Sheila uh, Stevenson, and uh, I'm very pleased to welcome Swapna uh, Srivastava as our new, new secretary. Uh, our treasurer is uh, Anil, uh, as uh, we've all uh, seen tonight. Excellent job. Um, past president is basically a position where any uh, past president who can be grabbed uh, and put into the position receives that honor. And uh, Steve took a year off this year to be counselor. He's uh, agreed to step back into the past president position. And I'm very, uh, very pleased to welcome as our new honorary president, uh, Dr. Ola Krull, who is with us tonight. Uh, so I'll say a few words about Oli uh, in just a few minutes. Um, our council is made up of uh, some uh, familiar faces and some new faces. Uh, returning for uh, another term is Chris Malicki uh, and uh, Leslie Strike uh, as a past president, a uh, third year of her three-year term. Uh, same with uh, Betty Robinson, our newsletter editor, uh, finishing out a three-year term as is Keith Jarvie, uh, well, a second year of a third year term. Uh, we had two members of council step down this year. Uh, one is John Marchese, who has been uh, with the organization pretty well since the beginning. And as you all know, is, uh, has been an excellent membership secretary. Uh, and he is stepping down from council, but I'm uh, pleased to say that he uh, will continue as our membership secretary. Uh, and also Joe Vandendool has stepped down uh, and uh, he will uh, hopefully continue in helping out in uh, observing committee matters. Uh, but in there, uh, it, to fill those vacancies, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Kirby Alguire and uh, Rob Neal, two members who have uh, participated and, and uh, contributed a lot uh, to uh, activities in the, in the center and now have, uh, have joined us uh, on council. So that I'm very uh, pleased to uh, announce is uh, our, uh, our slate for 2021. Uh, I certainly want to recognize uh, Dr. Krull, who's with us tonight, who has, uh, as I mentioned, was a uh, uh, supporter of the organization from the very beginning, from back when I had an idea to do this back in 2002. And uh, Uli, as you, many of you may or may not know, has been a member of the Mississauga Center since the beginning. And uh, he's, uh, uh, I guess, the, a biological chemist and professor and researcher and academic and uh, very accomplished, but also he has, a, I think, a C8 Uli or something like that. But uh, anyway, he's... Uh, He's an amateur astronomer like us. Uh, so I'm very glad to have him as honorary uh, president. Uh, and the role is, is meant just to uh, uh, not only a recognition of his contributions to the organization, but I certainly hope that he will uh, uh, help us out with various activities uh, with uh, planning uh, new steps for the organization. So again, I want to, uh, to thank and recognize our uh, our outgoing uh, counselors, uh, uh, Sheila Stevenson and uh, Joe, Joe Vandendool and, and John Marchese, who are not leaving us, but just stepping down from council. And uh, look forward to uh, uh, working with our new counselors, uh, that being Kirby and uh, Rob and Swatna. So uh, I'd like to uh, recognize our outgoing counselors and our incoming counselors and uh, ask everyone to uh, show their appreciation for their uh, support and help with the society. Okay, um, 
the next item is committee reports. And we've got uh, several committees. Uh, this is rather an informal opportunity for committee chairs to, uh, uh, to say a few words. And so I'm wondering if I can just, uh, I don't think I warn people about this, like well, sort of warn people. Um, but I'm gonna call on a few people just to say a few words about uh, their, excuse me, their activities. Uh, first thing is uh, I'm going to ask Alan Connery to say a few words about telescope loan. I'll unmute myself first. Uh, if I can share my screen. or just turn off my audio and video. Oh, I won't bother. How about that? Um, Try again. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure where, what went wrong. We have faith in you, Alan. Yeah, well, it's misplaced, but th th that's fine. It it's irrelevant. I, I really just wanted to bring up the stats. We had a, we had a really busy year with the telescope loan program. Uh, I think two factors, the obvious factor that overrode everything in the world, which was COVID, which drove people home and meant they didn't have as much to do perhaps. Uh, but uh, uh, so it also drove some new members to the club and not all new members had telescopes. So we ended up with um, some, oops, something exceeding 25 loans uh, over the year. I started recording uh, details uh, in July and there were 18 um, telescope loan, individual loans out from July to December. Um, the most popular uh, telescope to loan was the uh, 120 millimeter Acromat uh, that we have that was a donation from, help me out here, uh, Brian. It was uh, from Brian Gibson. Um, we did get the mount, but, but we actually got the scope from Brian. Uh, and it was loaned out six times. Um, it's, a, it's a good mount if you want to start um, trying astrophotography. Um, the, uh, we have two eight inch daubs and those were loaned out five times. We started lending out the nine and a quarter inch Lestron uh, Schmidt cast grain that we have that was uh, donated by Donald Punston. Um, and uh, that went out three times. That's a really nice scope. Um, you know, it's a, it's a little weightier, so we don't normally get out to kids, but um, uh, it's fully guided and uh, computerized and everything. Um, we uh, lent out the Celestron C8 that um, Phil Moselle donated a few years ago, and that went out three times. And we did have a loan of the solar scope uh, that went out uh, to one person, although one person's waiting for it. It's, it's coming back in shortly and it'll go out again. Um, another factor, I think, was the um, work that Rob Neal did on the website to simplify the process of uh, asking to borrow the scopes. If there's a dedicated page on the members uh, portion of the site that uh, shows a picture of um, each of the scopes and a description and a button to indicate uh, it's available for loan. Just click here and it'll send us a message and we get back to you and arrange it. Or it's coming back in, you know, as of this date. So it, it helps people keep in line. So that, that's how uh, I think all of the, um, certainly all of the um, loans from July on uh, were booked through the site. So I would um, ask that people take a look at that. It's, uh, it's right on the main screen under member benefits and it's equipment loans. Uh, so, and thanks again to Rob for all the work he did on that. Um, 
and uh, I had a link as to uh, um, the actual page, but you can find it if you go to the website. And um, you do have to be a member of good standing to borrow, but uh, I, I think we managed to get a few uh, new members through that. So that's all right. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Um, <coughs> I wanted to uh, <coughs> recognize Alan for all the work he did with Telescope Loan. I think there was a long lineup of cars at his driveway at one point <laughs> during, the, <coughs> there, during the year for pickup or dropping off telescopes. So uh, you know, it's amazing how active the telescope loan program got during COVID, but uh, who knew, right? <clears throat> All right, next I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the IT committee and, and Alan mentioned the website and uh, the IT committee is sort of a, a rough uh, group of a few people, Alan and, and uh, Rob Neal and myself. And uh, one of the accomplishments in 2020 was the revamping of the website. And uh, that uh, took a bit of time on designing, mainly because it was sitting on my plate for a long time. But uh, I definitely want to recognize Rob Neal for uh, all of the hard work that he did uh, and, and uh, Alan, his uh, contributions to helping Rob to reach a point where we have an excellent website which is now um, easy to update. I can actually update it and add uh, talks and various things. And uh, we've got our videos from talks set up. And I think as time goes on, we'll enhance it. But certainly having the uh, telescope loan information and the astrophotography contest, um, I think we should uh, recognize uh, Rob Neal and Alan Connery for their uh, contributions this year uh, with the development of the website. Thanks, Freddie. Well done. I guess the next thing to go up there would be the um, photo contest stuff. So, yes. And that's ready. Definitely. Yeah. And I was actually going to, uh, that was my next thing is I wanted to, uh, maybe Leslie, if you could say a few words about the astrophotography contest, if you are in a position to do that. Um, we are working on it. Um, the nice thing, and very new this year, and maybe COVID-driven, was the number of entries. We had 53 entries, um, and it's taken a while just to go through all of those. We've, we have three people on the committee. There's John Gola and Chris Malicki and myself. And we actually sit down and rate independently each photograph, and then we get together and figure out which ones are the winning ones and, and the runners up in the third places. And we're at the point now where everything's being rated and we just have to get together to actually do this um, decision on how the numbers have worked out. And we're hoping to do that this coming week. But the 53, there were some really beautiful, beautiful pictures in there. So it uh, made judging them difficult to say the least. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we look, look forward to hearing, uh, hearing the results. Thank you, astrophotography uh, contest people. Uh, next, I'd like to turn to uh, John Marchese, our uh, membership committee uh, chair. And John, are you in a position to talk to the membership numbers if I bring them up? I am, Randy. Okay, I'm going to try to do that. You should see them now. Okay, great. Uh, okay, basically, uh, this this uh, top panel represents a summary of what we've done in the last three years. Uh, we have different types of members. We have a regular, we have regular international members, regular U.S. Member, members, affiliate members. These are members... Uh, who are primarily uh, with another center, but also pay a centered fee with ours. So it's as if they're a full uh, member of our center as well. Uh, we have life members, uh, youth members, uh, family members. Uh, regular is usually a spouse and uh, youth is a child. And we have a total. So at the end of 2018, we had about 100, we had 187. At the end of 2019, we had 182, so we were down slightly. 
And at the end of 2020, we were at uh, 198, which is up quite a bit from 182. Uh, if we look at what we've done each year, uh, basically, we, have, we get a lot of new members every year. Unfortunately, a lot of them leave as well, too. So we probably we get more or less uh, the same number. And uh, for instance, in 2019, we added 38, but we lost 43. Uh, in 2020, we actually did a lot better. We added 40 and we only lost 24. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe people like the virtual meetings. Anyway, if we look at the panel below, this is just a more detailed look at, at 2020 in uh, two month chunks. Basically, um, I started creating this so that I could provide the uh, new members for Betty for uh, Messenger. And uh, it makes a nice way of showing a snapshot of what happened in the year. Now this list actually has close to 200 uh, rows. I'm only showing the last few here. So we had two new members in January and February, four new members in March, April, 14 in May, June, 10 in July, August, uh, two in September, October, and another eight here. And, and you can see the names of the members here as well. I'm not sure if the resolution is good enough for you to actually make them out, uh, but everybody in red here is our new members in 2020. And that's my report. <laughs> Hey, thanks, John. It's great to see uh, an increase in youth members. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm very pleased uh, to say that John is going to continue in this position of membership secretary for life. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, John. Uh, you're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> um, few other committees uh, I'd like to uh, recognize or, or at least discuss. One is uh, our newsletter editor, Betty, uh, who doesn't have a report, but I wanted to recognize her efforts this year. Uh, it takes a lot to put the newsletter together and I want to uh, recognize Betty for her efforts. And, uh, and certainly note that the president gets all his material to the uh, editor on time. At least most most of the time. Okay, fortunately Betty is muted, so we can't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, th that was very convenient. Uh, thanks, Randy, and thanks to Fred Benedict for helping out every issue. Oh yes, thank you, Fred. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in trouble or not. We'll soon find out. You're always in trouble. <laughs> Um, one committee that's been very active this year, and we will see the uh, results of all of their activity, is the Bylaws and Policy uh, Committee, and Leslie is uh, the chair of that. And Leslie, could you just tell us a little bit of the work that uh, your committee has been working on? Well, we started off um, in September that the Center has never had uh, a policy manual. And some of the stuff that is going into the policy manual used to be in the old bylaws, but they weren't really things that belong in the bylaws. Bylaws are required to be approved at an AGM, whereas some of the, the ongoing kind of operational things should not have to do that. And so they've moved into the policy manual. It's taken us, um, until now, in fact, I'm going to release um, by Monday at the latest, hopefully, the version that's going to counsel for their perusal, questioning, and hopefully approval. Um, it's taken that long to put it together. We started out using the National Society's policy manual, but there was a lot in there that applies to the National Society, things that they do that an individual center doesn't. And there were things that were missing in there that a center needs to have. So we've we put this together. It's quite a hefty document, but it lays out, um, you know, policies that we're going to have about elections, policies that we're going to have about um, conflict of interest, about behavior that's expected, anti-harassment stuff, 
policies on our telescope loan program. All of those things are in this manual, as well as detailed mandates and activities for the numerous committees that we have, which most of which had never ever been written down. So um, we're hoping that we will actually get it approved by council. I don't think it's going to happen at our next council meeting because I think there's going to be questions and whatever, but probably by the June meeting. And then it will be released and people will be able to access it on the website. Um, it's going to help an awful lot ongoing because it kind of sets out the processes we um, are going to use, the um, overriding way we want to do business. And as I say, it's never been documented. So you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants sometimes. And this is going to kind of put some structure there. So I'm hopeful that it will be useful to the center. And um, Keith Jarvey and Chris Malicki have been working with me since September on this thing. We're all a little bit fed up to tell you the truth, but um, <laughs> I think we've got a, a decent document. And Betty Robinson has been excellent in editing it and um, questioning some of the wording, which led to a whole bunch of conversation about what did we really mean? So this kind of stuff has really helped. And I think it's going to be a first class document when it's finally released. Excellent. And hopefully it will be soon. Yeah, that's a, that's a brutal job. So uh, I think we all should thank our bylaw committee for working on this, uh, this project. Thank you. There's one thing that a, a club like this needs, it's a certain corporate memory to uh, um, to be able to be passed down for uh, uh, to newer members so uh, that's a very important thing okay um, so just the last few Randy can I say something yes Chris yeah I'd like to acknowledge the what people might not know is many 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 hours that Leslie has spent and if you add up how many hours she spent it'll be day like 24 hours times many times so days worth of work that she did like she, anyways that's that's what i wanted to say how much she's done yeah well you, i uh i can't agree more chris thank you um i see uh our past president uh joe vanandul is here joe you missed all the accolades for your uh yourself when you weren't here so i just want to uh, mention again that Joe is our past Apologies. president. Uh, stepping down from council and uh, observing and our national council rep. So thank you, Joe, for uh, for everything you did to for the society. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I'm really excited about the fact that this is, in my memory, the highest turnover on council that I've seen. And I think that is very exciting because that it, it tells me that there's, there's, new ideas and 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 uh, a higher level of commitment this year coming to council so that 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 promises that there should be good stuff coming from uh, from council in, in the next year and so that's great great thanks again joe um yeah okay so that's uh are there any other committee chairs or anything that uh, uh, people would like to report. I think we've given a pretty good summary of what's been going on as best we have been able to do it. I should say one thing about program is that we've had uh, a little bit more in the way of speakers. Um, we sort of substituted a few potpourri meetings for speakers we were, because we've been able to find uh, speakers who would uh, sign in on a Zoom meeting. And I think one thing that the COVID situation will do is, I think it'll uh, make it a little easier for us to invite uh, long distance speakers to speak to our UTM meetings uh, via Zoom. It was sort of, uh, I don't know, I don't know, wouldn't say frowned upon, but it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't considered uh, uh, when, you know, having live meetings at UTM. Uh, certainly, we're going to have to uh, make sure that we can technically do it, 
but I certainly look forward to uh, having a mix of uh, live, uh, you know, people on site and uh, and distance uh, speakers as well in the future. So, but in the meantime, uh, uh, the program committee has uh, put together some uh, already put together some speakers over the next few months. Uh, so uh, we're working hard on that now, and uh, Swapna has uh, has has uh, joined the program committee to uh, to uh, organize that. All right. So if I can move on to no item nine, new business, that is this is just generally an opportunity for uh, members to uh, address uh, issues and ask questions to uh, the council. Uh, so if anyone has any questions or anything on their mind, this is your uh, opportunity. Any questions that anyone has to bring up or comments? Not really a question, but a comment. Congratulations to everybody for keeping the center alive during this very difficult time. And I've really enjoyed the courses that have been offered from the national office. I might become an expert in astronomy by the time this is over. Don't laugh. Alan, you're laughing. Well, I'm very glad to hear you say that, Wendy. So, uh, yeah, no, I can only uh, echo that. It's uh, uh, this, everyone has stood up and, and given some extra support. And uh, I must admit, I had some concerns at the beginning of the year. And if somebody said we would be approaching 200 members, I think we had 200 members for a little while at one point. Uh, but uh, it was interesting. Nationally, uh, they lost about 400, 500 members, but now it's bouncing back. And it's interesting to see the various national and local news reports across the country about how people are picking up, uh, taking up amateur astronomy. So uh, who knew? We're at 200 right now, actually, Randy. All right. Randy? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'd like to uh, uh, just weigh in here for a moment. I'd like to, uh, as a council member and member of the uh, RASC, I'd like to um, formally recognize Randy uh, for the for the work he's done in the past year. This has complete, been completely, that's a good look, Alan. This has been a completely um, unprecedented year that we have all uh, had to experience and the pressures and uh, responsibilities at, as president of the center, as Randy knows uh, 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 very well, and I've had the opportunity to learn myself. Um, uh, the added pressures of the pandemic, I'm sure, have weighed on Randy in t on how to keep the center together and uh, keep things moving and running uh, as efficiently as it has. So I'd like to recognize Randy and thank him as well for the work that he's done and uh, uh, continued success into the uh, uh, new year and the rest of the center. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. We second that. <laughs> Great, Randy? thanks everybody. Randy? Yes, sir, David. Uh, I would just like to add is uh, one of those uh, people that appeared on uh, the new member list here that uh, it's uh, been a, uh, what you've done this year has been outstanding. The content has been great. I've. Uh, enjoyed it and uh, it's uh, been a, a welcoming group even though I've never met anybody in person it's uh, the astrophotography group is good and uh, actually I've met Chris and a couple others when we tried to uh, get into uh, Forks of the Credit Provincial Park and we're locked out so uh, but it's been you know I must commend you well done for great programming considering the circumstances thanks very much yeah, won't it be great when we can actually get together and actually I'm on a video generated image. I really don't exist, so. More importantly, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Man, uh, thanks for the visual one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> you should be so hey, lucky. That, it doesn't go in the minutes. <laughs> don't get up, Alan. Don't get up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, anything else before we uh, move to the next item, which is essentially the next meeting? Okay, um, thanks everybody. Our next meeting I've got down here uh, a year from now, 
uh, on the 27th of February, 2022. Hopefully that will be in person. Uh, with that, I will uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Who would like to make that? David Marsh? Uh, David, Ma sorry, David Maynard. Uh, seconded by John Marquez. Seconded. Um, actually, I see John, John Marchese. So David Maynard. I was the first seconder. <laughs> <laughs> I can have an argument on closing the meeting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Motion uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so we have a meeting in two weeks. It is a potpourri, so we'll be after you for presentations uh, soon. And uh, our speaker in March is the public relations person at the Canada-France Hawaii Telescope. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Talking to us from Hawaii. From, uh, Beautiful. Yeah, Aww. so uh, yeah, thanks, Swapna, for setting that up. And uh, we'll uh, continue to see you on our email. And uh, everyone take care and stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. 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 Bye.